Hello, Renee here, independent uh, demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And uh, we have another card for you, uh, Hannah and I, uh, with the um, piece of cake, right? And yep. so um, we are going to go ahead and uh, do a different kind of model that I found on Pinterest. And it's not exactly the same, um, and it's a little different. You've seen certain things that are similar, uh, but um, this is a little bit of an alteration. It's a little simpler than the one on Pinterest. And um, here's Hannah. Yes, so I'm Hannah with Hannah Crafted Gifts. Um, you may have seen our last video using the piece of cake stamp set. We made the picnic table card. Um, and so that was like our casual outdoor version, if you will, um, using that stamp set. And so that's one way of doing the fold. And today we're showing a different way of doing the fold. And I think it kind of turns out to be, at least for mine, like a dining room table card. So here it is closed. Um, you can say it says, or see it says, sorry, happy birthday, cut the cake. You're thinking, where's the cake? Um, and if you fold it down, like that other one folds, just vertical this time instead of horizontal, there's the cake. Um, and there's the knife to cut it. <laughs> it's all ready to go. People's plates waiting for it. Um, so yeah, so that's my version. I'll be making a very similar version of that today. Um, and so you'll see some differences as we go through. So you'll have a few different options to try out. Um, so I guess we'll get started with our um, cardstock, right, Renee? So I'll yeah, yeah. So we can get I think going. the the um, nice thing about this card set is that we are going to be doing uh, a simple version and then a step up version. So um, and Hannah's is the step up version. How am I centered, Hannah? That looks great. That looks great. Good. Um, All right. So we've gone ahead and scored this. Renee, do you want to remind us what the dimensions are on that? Yes. So you are going to take your sheet of paper, and mine is going to be Sahara Sand, and you are going to cut the eight and a half side to four and a quarter. So it's going to be long. All right. That's the opposite way of cutting. And then you will be left with the 11 inch side. So you will score it at five and a half right here. These um, scores are going to be a half, two, four, and then the five and a half. Right. The way you're going to fold, the way you're going to fold this is very easy because it's up, 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 and up all right and mine is a little different because we'll see in a minute renee will be gluing hers together um mine i wanted to still have be able to fully fold flat like a a normal four and a quarter by five and a half card so i've actually folded a mountain fold at my hinge a mountain fold a mountain fold but that last fold is instead of valley fold so you can see it goes the opposite direction so that way it's going to tuck under and be able to untuck and fold flat so that's one difference. Very good. Okay, so basically to close my card, now you're gonna keep yours open? I'm gonna keep mine open, yeah. Mine okay. is like this. So to close the card, it's really easy. And um, I'm just gonna glue that so that, oh, I can't do that yet because I have to put the other stuff in. So do you want me to go ahead or how do we wanna do this? Um, you can go ahead with whatever your next step would be and. And okay. I think we can do the same. My next step would be adding the DSP. Is that what you were going to do or something else? Yes. 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 So, so what I, so what I did is I went ahead and um, so this piece ends up to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Right guys. So then all you do is you're going to cut an eighth or a quarter on the white whisper white, then another eighth or a quarter less on each side for the woven threads DSP. Then again, I did another layer of the uh, color designer series paper and I did another eighth or a quarter. I have a tendency to go quarters versus eighths. So it'd be a quarter on the four and a quarter, it'd be a quarter off of the five and a half and just keep on going down. I hope that's self-explanatory and I would glue that. All right. On the front of the card, I do the exact same thing here. I'm going to have that come 
here and I'm going to glue it onto that middle flap, all right? So that you can see that, all right? So again, quarter, quarter, quarter on both sides. This is a two by four. This is a two by four. So the first piece is one and three quarters by three and three quarters, and then a quarter less and a quarter less. All right, I think I've, I've done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on. So this goes on the front. What's more important is not the bottom, it's how your top looks. Pay attention to the top part, then glue it. Don't worry about underneath because it's hidden anyway. All right, Hannah, I'm done. Okay. So yeah, so that looks lovely with those framed um, pieces, Renee, and that's very traditional card making. Um, so great to get those tips on spacing. I am doing mine a little differently again. So I am making mine a little bit more like a literal scene. So again, if you see my sample, I have my tablecloth um, and my wallpaper with my mirror. Um, so it's supposed to be like a little scene right out of a dollhouse or something. So I've made my DSP and I'm using retired DSP. So I will link to the current DSP and you can choose the patterns you like. This is from I think the tea time, tea together, something like that, um, DSP. And I'm flipping it up this time. So this time I'm gonna have the stripes as my tablecloth. So I've put that from the half inch score line all the way down the front of my card. Um, and if you watched our last video, up oh, there's my cat sneaking behind me. Um, if you watched our last video, you know when you're gluing on top of something that's gonna be folded, you have to very quickly and very gently, once you glue that in place, go ahead and, and fold on those score lines again so that you're getting that fold in your um, DSP without tearing it. Uh, if you wait too long till it's dry, it's going to be very hard to bend that cardstock again. Um, for this half inch strip, I've cut the wallpaper DSP, which this time is this little um, flourish. And so that is when I tuck this half inch piece up along the wall under my cake and under my mirror, it's going to blend right in with the wallpaper. Now, honestly, um, this mirror, it takes up so much of the space, you wouldn't even need wallpaper. You could just have, I'm using a very vanilla base, and so you could just have the wall be very vanilla um, and then have that mirror cover most of it up. So this is really an extra step you don't need to do if you don't wanna worry about lining this half inch strip up with this piece on the back of the wall. So I'm gonna keep gluing that and um, we'll go back to what you're doing, Renee. Okay, so uh, the important thing here is, as you saw, I glued this down. Make sure that your words are going the right way when you cut your paper. And this also, for this one, if you're using something that's up and down, always check. That's always a double check. And so I simply went ahead and uh, glued uh, this uh, two by four piece down. It's actually one and three quarters by three and three quarters, the white. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue down my delicate lace, which is also going, I'm gonna glue that down on the shelf. So this would be, I'm gonna take this apart so you can see how that looks. So this is the shelf. So you see here, that belongs here and then your shelf, all right? One thing so I'm, I'm gonna, oh sorry, go and ahead. Then, and then I'm just going to cut it off at the end, all right? So I'm gonna glue that down real quick and I'm gonna show you how that works and cut that piece off. All right, go ahead, Hannah. I was just gonna say that um, if you're building your card the way I am, you have to keep in mind, um, it's quite different from your typical card. Um, a typical card cut like this would probably open, let me put it in your orientation, probably open this way or maybe this way. This one is actually opening in a way this way. <laughs> um, so the fold is at the bottom, not the top. So when you're putting it together, you wanna have your tablecloth coming up from the fold, your half inch uh, wallpaper strip on the opening side, and then you're gonna have your wallpaper from the opening side here. And so you're just gonna line it up with that opening edge and put it down as far as it goes. And I'll have all my dimensions in my product description on um, my page for this video posting so you can check out exactly how big this would be. So when I'm gluing this down, my delicate lace, my tablecloth, um, I am going to glue it so that these edges will go right over the edge and glue down. I do intend for that to happen. So you'll see, I will glue that down and that will stick. So I'm going to go ahead 
and just make sure. So I did glue that, make sure that sticks down there. And then I'm going to cut this right off. I glued that extra piece, which I didn't have to. <laughs> That's why my paper got kind of sticky. The, um, what is that? The, what is that for the embossing when we do that embossing and the buddy? What is that buddy called? Oh, the embossing buddy. The <laughs> embossing buddy, it. yeah. Okay, it's the embossing buddy. You can use the embossing buddy anytime. They are not going to be selling them, but you can use the embossing buddy. And if you get some ink on your, I mean, some glue on your paper, you can get rid of it through the embossing buddy, which is going. So I'm going to glue that a little bit further down. I think what that does, um, and I didn't catch everything you said there, Renee, um, so I'm focused. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think what the embossing buddy does is it puts that powder over top of the glue so it's no longer sticky. Right. It'll still be there, but it won't get in the way. Right. Yeah. Um, what I'm doing, I'm using the retired um, Delicata metallic ink. So if you got that during the last holiday catalog, this is the shimmery silver. And I'm just using a sponge dauber on my finger here to add a little bit of shine to my mirror frame. And this is using the heirloom um, frames, 3D embossing folders and dies. Those are being retired as well. And they create these great, this is the rectangle. There's also an oval. Um, hopefully you can see that detail, this great floral detail frame. Um, so when I saw this fold for this card, I thought, oh my gosh, it would fit perfectly. And thank goodness it did. <laughs> yes. And here it is. Here's that. Uh, those are the two. That's the oval. That's the rectangle. I did the rectangle also, but I cut it. There, when you get the um, embossing folder, the this embossing, these two embossing folders, uh, you do need to get the die because you do need to cut it out. Uh, unless you want to fussy cut it. Yeah, but you have to fussy cut out the center. That would be kind of difficult, I think. For yeah. me, it was. Uh, so, together, so they'll have to get them together. Right. Oh, they are. Oh, oh okay. I yeah. forgot. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. They are <laughs> to have both, so it's good that they did that. Otherwise, people could have been stuck. So you see how that works? All right. So now how do I glue this piece down? Um, so the way I glue this down is I'm going to take this and the outside edge is that where I'm going to add that glue. All right. And then all I do is I fold this down, I just leave it like this, as you can see here. And then I just fold that over and then that's going to make it stick. Oh yeah, and here's the die. This is what the die looks like, by the way. All right, so there it goes already. All right, mine's very simple. So I am gonna uh, go ahead and show you that because it really is a simple uh, one and hers is a stepped up, so it's gonna be a little more intricate. But what I was going to do is I was going to frame that, uh, cut the cake up here, like a little window frame. And I have to get it on the correct side, so I'll make sure I did that right. And so that's going to go like that, just like that. And you can you can position that further down if you like, or further up. Just depends on you. I'm going to take that and put it right there. That's what's going to go. Put that down. I've got my words, so I can easily um, align it because of the lines of the words. So that's where that one's going to go. I'm using the silver foil as my mirror, so I'm just going to be putting a tiny bit bead of glue on the inside of my frame, and then I'll stick that in. You have to be very careful with your um, multi-purpose liquid glue or really any liquid adhesive with the foil sheets, because if it gets on there, you will see it forever. It's quite a smudge. Um, the adhesive remover can help a little bit. You can rub it with your finger a little bit. Um, especially if your finger's a little wet, that can help, but it's not very forgiving. It will show that. So you have to be very careful here. I actually decided to move this up a little bit so you could see cut the cake. That's cute. I yeah. actually wanted that higher. Sorry. It's yeah, I want that dark. so that you can see. Yeah, so you can see cut the cake. 
And then this is going to go, the frame is simply going to encase that. All right, and there goes the frame. So cheeky, like happy birthday. Now cut the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is cute, isn't it? So we're gonna do that. I'm gluing this, the, the frame. And all I did is I made the frame and then I cut it at the ends. And then, um, no, that's it. I cut it at the ends and then glued the one end to that piece. So that's all I did. There you go. I love the words because it helps you line everything up. Do you That's have always a fun part. frame on dimensions, huh? Renee, or are you just gluing it down? No, I'm just gluing it down. Okay. I'm going to have that uh, cake, which is going to be three-dimensional, which is right. going to be enough. So, so again, um, so all I did is I used the um, piece of cake um, little um, pops here and went all the way around and then used the cut the cake. Uh, my colorings are um, the Poppy Parade. I love Poppy Parade on this uh, Rococo Rose uh, background DSP. I think it works really well. I think it stands out well. And um, again, the Sahara Sand and the frame, of course, was Seaside Spray, which is what the color of the 2019-2021 series DSP is. All right, you so now. Oh, sorry, go ahead, show it off. Yeah, that looks lovely. There we go lovely. there. And mine's all yeah. using Calypso Coral because um, that was the color in my DSP. Um, so what I'm doing now, I did put dimensionals on the back of my frame. Um, it makes sense for Renee's not to because of the way hers is gonna fold in. Um, but for mine, it's necessary because this is what's going to allow that half inch flap um, to slide under and keep my card standing upright as a table. So I have to line it up. I'm gonna show you how I do that real quick. I'm just taking my stickers off, should have done that sooner. Um, so what I do is I take that half inch flap. Hopefully you can see, I know the light's not great. Um, but I'm gonna slide that half inch flap back until the fold is at the bottom of the DSP on the inside. So can you see that right here? The DSP's on the inside. I'm sliding my fold back until it lines up. And then I'm gonna put my mirror on such that this edge of the card will catch under the mirror against those dimensionals and hold it in place. So I'm gonna work on that. Okay, so now I'm going to put the cake and for my cake, um, I used the Seaside Foam and the Rococo Rose, and I used the Crumb Cake as my stamp set. My theme is Mocha and Raspberry, so that's how that goes together. And um, I'm going to place my cake right over right over the cut the cake, all right? So that it'll be kind of a surprise when you open it up. So I am going to glue the cake down, and luckily it is pretty darn well centered, thank goodness. <laughs> I did put a backing on the cake. Sometimes I might even stamp that backing. I did not this time. But you can do that. I don't like to see the back um, messed up, so I go ahead and uh, put a backing on that so it looks just as good as the front does. I'm and with Hannah you. does, yeah. Yeah, I'll show my cake in a second here. I'm just fussing with my mirror, but um, I actually, even though it's going to be up against the mirror, <laughs> I thought that gold foil is a little reflective like a mirror would be. It might show. <laughs> so that's an extra step um, for my card that you all who are following along certainly don't have to do. Um, I actually stamped two cakes and then glued them. I'll be gluing them together back to back. Um, I don't know that it really is noticeable to anyone but me. So that's just extra. <laughs> so you can see how that works. Very simple, very simple, simple card. All right, now to put the items on the top. And um, the cake plate is right here. I hope I did not lose, I did not lose my knife. In my intro, I teach you how to cut the knife. 
Uh, so um, if you want to learn how to cut the knife, it's fairly simple. Uh, and um, here is my plate. Again, I used um, the um, circle dies to do this. And um, there are two kinds of circle dies. You can decide on which ones you want. Um, but um, the uh, punched, these were punched out at an inch. And again, that one inch punch is going away. And this one inch punch is golden. I will tell you how many times have we used this, Hannah, almost in every video we've ever done. It's so um, versatile, yeah. Yeah, it is really handy. So I will put my cake, as you can see, I will put my cake right here. I will put my knife right there. And I have another one inch that I did uh, cut out of the DSP. Uh, I'm gonna use the tan side, all right, of this. And I'm just gonna cut it in half because my cake is going to my, my groom's cake. Now again, this could be a graduation card easily oh, yeah. with the congratulations, whatever you like, uh, birthday. I'm just gonna make it a wedding. You could keep this out or not, um, depending on what you want. Uh, I will talk about that 3D cake in just a second. Well, actually, I can talk about it now because all I'm going to do is cut that in half. So what I did is um, I have a raspberry mocha um, cake. And uh, so I made six different. I cut out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven actual pieces of, uh, I punched out um, of the um, cake punch. And then I just used um, the small dimensionals, put them pretty much in the center, and then stuck them all together. And this gives us a little three-dimensionality. It looks like a little raspberry mocha because I have in between uh, the mocha colored or the crumb cake color and the rococo rose, the crumb cake, the rococo rose. So it gives it a little bit of that mocha raspberry kind of flavor. So I will cut this and then I will glue this to the back right here. All right, you can make two of these. You can make how many ever you want. Um, and I'm gonna put mine right back here so that it closes well. Took my little crinkled ribbon, um, which is gonna still be um, in the new catalog. And that's the crinkled ribbon is just so easy. Just took a glue dot and just put that right on top. And there's your little cake. I love so your I your cake. That's so cute, Renee. And, <laughs> and the cameo, by the way, he was curious to know what you were doing, so he came up to visit. <laughs> oh, Can good. I show what I'm doing with my cake real quick, just before I get too far ahead? Yeah, yeah, go for behind, it. Maybe. Um, so I've got, like I said, one cake glued uh, to another, and I even fussy cut out those flowers on the top and glued one to the other. Um, so that way, if you see the reflection in the mirror, you still see cake. And um, again, this was Calypso Coral for me. I did use the stamp and write marker to color in, oh, there it is, I'll get it in frame, to color in the little decorations on the cake. Um, so that's, if you have those, something you can do, certainly not necessary. And this is gonna go on dimensionals for me as well, up against my mirror. Um, unlike my first version, which had the plate, I am gonna do a cake stand this time, so we'll see how that works. Um, I don't think we've mentioned it in this video yet, I know we've mentioned it in our last one, but there is a punch, the cake builder punch, that will punch out both the two tier cake and the stand at one time, which is great. So you can see I glued that on the back, pushed down, did the half plate there. I'm just gonna glue this plate. Again, that's just the circle uh, dies and the one inch punch, the little crumbs from the happy birthday to you um, stamp set that is not available anymore. But again, from our first video you saw, we just talked about uh, how you could just add dots and then I will put my knife in there and I'm done. Woohoo! Well, I'm just a little further behind you. Um, I'll do some catching up here and you're certainly welcome to. Well yours is yours is the step, step up. Yours is yours is <laughs> the I can step take up. Longer. I just had so much trouble fussing with my mirror this time so that that took up a lot of time. I have to say though Renee I don't think yours is too simple in a good way. I think it's actually it's quite stepped up too. I would say um, yours is at least casual crafting, 
Um, <laughs> and mine might yes. be avid crafting, but yeah, I don't think either of these are at quite the beginner level. They certainly could be modified. So I'm not saying to you all out there watching that, you know, you can't do this if you're just getting started, you absolutely can. Um, but in stamping, we talk about the three levels of beginner, casual and avid, because we don't want to overwhelm people and make them feel like, you know, they can't do it just because it's so involved. <laughs> um, there's always ways to make it more accessible. Yes, and, and by the way, even um, the cards that they make like these, they make them a little differently and a little more intricate. And I actually simplified that because I, I did, they actually put a, another card, a smaller card okay. on top here. And I just did not see, um, I did not see it to be necessary. So I simplified the cardstock so that you have less cardstock. I agree. When I saw that too, I thought that would be cute for another type of card, but for this yes. type of card, I thought it made more sense without that yes. front piece. Um, Cause that would be blocking our little table scene here. I am just having so much trouble with dimensionals today. So I apologize for that. That's what's really slowing me down. So, but I'm getting so the big, yeah, the big thing here is that you want to tuck your ribbon in. You kind of want to make sure that this closes in and, and I could put this, bow further down to make sure it closes in. I decided I like liked the extra um, the extra ribbon tails. Uh, you might not and you can cut them. They'll be easier to uh, close. Um, here's the tabletop. If you can see that, um, the tabletop. There's your knife, your cake plate, your extra cake. That's very, very much it. And then what I would do is, I, by the way, I have some friends that are anniversary, that are having anniversaries. So that's where these are going. Uh, and then I would just tuck that in just like that, fold that down, and there you go and put it in the envelope. Of course, the back side, on the back side of this card, I did use the um, woven heirlooms, um, stamp set, which is continuing, and um, put it on the back. Um, this one is the blank. There's really no yeah. room on the inside anymore. <laughs> right, and so again, this is a quarter or an eighth of an inch smaller, that's all it is. So uh, if this is four and a quarter, then this is gonna be four. If this is five and a half, then this will be five and a quarter. Uh, it's just always a quarter or an eighth depending on what kind of border you like. I usually like the borders a little bit bigger for some reason, that's just me. And so this is what your cake would look like when they bring it up and then they will open it up here. And there you go. So it's there to there. Lovely, Renee. I just am having the hardest time with dimensionals. I think it's because I'm trying to use these little bits that I've got left and my fingers are super sticky from my glue. <laughs> oh, um, you so got those glue I will just fingers. say, because we're about to run out of time. So all I would be doing to finish off this card would be adding my two plates. Um, I would be putting my knife, which I can at least lay here to show you, um, right in the middle. And there'll be pictures of this on my blog. And then I'll just add my tags that say, happy birthday, cut the cake on the front there. And that's that. So um, let's come back on and show our final projects because I'm getting a notification from Zoom that we're going to be cut off here in a minute. So um, okay. real quickly, right. thank you so much for watching. Here's the projects, almost finished. <laughs> and as always, happy crafting. Happy crafting. Here's the other one. Ah! <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Are you counting to three? <laughs> I meant like, sorry, I meant like count to three in your head. I wasn't clear. Oh. <laughs> Just go ahead. <laughs>